Hello everybody, Chris here, and today I'd like to introduce you to Video Land Client Media Player, otherwise known as VLC Media Player. And in my opinion, VLC Media Player is one of the best media players out there, especially if you're looking for a no-frills experience that's lightweight and just does what you expect it to, which is to play media, uh, which includes video files, audio files, and the like. So in this video, I'll introduce you to most of the basic functions of VLC Media Player. Basically, anything I think you're going to need to get started and you're likely to use in your everyday uh, usage of VLC Media Player. And by the end of the video, I hope I've convinced you that it's a pretty good option. And of course, I'll throw a link to the download in the description down below. So, uh, one of the first things you should know about VLC Media Player and any media player, you see right out here to the side, I have Big Buck Bunny. Uh, one of the most commonly used uh, videos on the internet um, for basically purposes of demoing websites and that kind of thing. And right now it's a .org file, but it's not associated with VLC Media Player. You know it's associated with VLC Media Player because you'd see the logo, which is this traffic cone. But with this file and any other uh, media file that we want to associate with a specific media player, we can change that by going to right click, and this is in Windows of course, open with, choose default program, and then select VLC media player. Uh, you may have to do this a couple times because there's a lot of different media player formats out there. Uh, for instance, I probably have MP3s associated with video land, I probably have .avis associated, but maybe not .org. So you go ahead and do that, and um, then it will open and default these .org files to in the future open up inside of VLC Media Player. So now, of course, um, you got this really bright, vibrant uh, Big Buck Bunny animation there, and it's pretty cool if you want to go check that out, but that's not the focus of the video here. Um, so we'll just, eh, let's leave it up and let's use this window. All right, so to go through the different menus of VLC Media Player, and up here, 90% of the function you'll ever use inside of VLC Media Player if it's not already on the hot bars down below. So the media is basically file open kind of thing. You can open one file, you can open multiple files, especially if you're trying to create a playlist for things like uh, music. That's a really useful tool right there. And all your other open stuff. And save playlist to file. And saving your playlist to a file is really nice because if you have, say, 10 or 20 MP3s loaded up into a uh, VLC Media Player, you can save it for later and then just open that same batch of songs up uh, just by double-clicking the file or opening it with Control o or uh, Open File. Uh, but we'll get to playlists in a little bit. It's over there in the Tools menu, I believe. So in the playback menu, there's actually not too much you'd really need to use here because most of the functionality, play, stop, previous, next, record, uh, that junk is all down there in the uh, main bar for playing and stopping video files. You got the play button, stop, backwards, forwards, um, full screen, and all those other kind of typical tools. You really wouldn't go into this playback menu to do those, but you could if you wanted to. Uh, one thing you can note, though, is if for some reason you want to play a video back slower or faster, uh, possibly to kind of catch something that was really not obvious in a video, you could do this here by uh, slowing down the video or just slowing it down a tiny bit with the fine increment that increases or decreases the speed by 0.10. But overall, uh, not the most useful menu. So then you can go over to the audio menu, uh, which is, for the most part, not going to be necessary as well because, you know, the increase, decrease, volume, or mute it, you can just do that in the bottom right-hand corner where you have the audio controls there as well. But what is useful in this menu is to tell your uh, computer what device you actually are going to be outputting your audio to. So, for instance, um, right now I'm running two different types of speakers. I got my... Uh, second monitor, the one you're seeing this video on right here, and that's hooked up to a speaker system. But I also have the Realtek High Definition Audio, which would just be the laptop itself. And you may have this kind of setup where you want to switch between audio devices. That's how you do it. Audio, audio device, bam. So then you can go over to the video tab, and the most useful functionality here 
it's not going to be this stuff down below like Zoom or D interface. That's kind of, you know, advanced or technical stuff. But it's going to be full screen. Um, now, if you want to go video full screen, of course, as you would expect, it's going to make the video full screen. So what you really need to know about the video tab is going to be the full screen uh, option. And that's pretty much self-explanatory if you've ever played a video file before. Full screen makes it go full screen if you let go of the mouse for a second. The interface disappears and you're good to go. Uh, you can hit spacebar to play or you can uh, move your mouse and just hit the play button and then move it back off the interface, let go, and all you'll see is the video file itself. So that's really useful. You can right click the screen and hit leave full screen to get out of uh, full screen. And you can also toggle full screen on and off using the uh, button down below this one that says toggle the video and full screen. It does the exact same thing. But one more um, thing regarding full screen that you should know about is F11 on your keyboard. If you hit F11, it's not technically putting it in uh, full screen in the same way, but it is maximizing the window and removing the borders from the window. So it's almost like you're full screen, but it's not, because if I click full screen right here, it'll go to actual full screen. I click it again, and it just goes back to the maximized without borders. So of course, if you want to get rid of maximized without borders, you just hit F11 again, and you're back to normal. So subtitle menu. If you don't know, uh, subtitles is basically where you have text on your video um, that's going to be playing. Uh, usually, if the video itself is in a foreign language that you don't understand, um, then people may put uh, subtitles in the video, whether it's a DVD or uh, it's a fan-made subtitle for something like anime online. Um, you can choose the different subtitle tracks by going to subtitle, subtrack, and this may be important because certain videos or video files that do get subtitled, get subtitled in multiple languages. So if you're seeing Spanish in the text, but you want to see English, uh, try checking subtitle, subtrack, and then seeing if there's an English option there. That's something that's pretty useful because you know, some videos do have dual subtitles or more. Um, the tools menu, probably one of the most useful ones um, in terms of just pure information. You got two things you really want to look at here if uh, you're confused about what's wrong with the video, or maybe you want to know the resolution of what it's playing back at. So you can hit Control i or Control j to open media information and codec information. And this stuff, it's just going to have, you know, basic information about the video in general if it's actually been filled out. And codec information, which if you click it there in the tools menu, will bring you to the same exact uh, window, is going to have not only the resolution, but also the frame rate of the video, and I believe, yes, the uh, the type of video codec that it's playing back with, which in this case is zif.org, the or uh, video. Um, not something you necessarily need in everyday purposes, but it's really good to know that it's there, especially resolution. Um, I find myself checking the resolution of the file uh, every now and then. So good to know. And that brings us to, oh, by the way, the rest of the stuff in the tools menu. Um, you can add plugins and stuff to VLC, but I've never seen the need to do that. So that's that's more advanced stuff if you re you're really, really into customizing VLC Media Player. But you can, for the most part, kind of discount that. You won't need that every day. Um, so then, of course, the playlists. As I was mentioning right at the start of this video, it, you would want to have a playlist if you're playing audio files, and maybe if you're doing video as well. So you can either hit Control l on your keyboard to open up the playlist, or you can just click it right there. Now, you'll notice that when I did that, um, it basically minimized this video over here in the corner and brought the, uh, the, uh, the media files that are currently in the list right over here to display on the screen. Now, it doesn't have to do that. The reason it's doing that is because I have docked playlist checked. So if I was to actually click docked playlist here and uncheck that, what would happen is the playlist and the video or audio window, the, uh, the media player window rather, uh, become two separate entities. So it's up to you if you want to have it docked or not docked. Um, personally, I think it's nice to have it docked when you're playing um, audio files, but maybe not so much when you're doing video. Now, uh, back to that. Let's say you put 10 or 20 audio files on this list here. 
Well, it's going to be on the current playlist, which means if you want to save that, all you need to do is go over to Media, Save Playlist to File. Of course, you can also use the Control y shortcut. And then uh, pick a location on your computer for you to save it to. And then if you ever want to open up that same playlist, as long as you have the audio files on your computer and the playlist is still there, you can just basically double click that, have it open in VLC Media Player, and have the same songs loaded right back up for you to play at a later date. So that's, that's a pretty useful function. Of course, you can also open the same file up by doing open file, and that works with any video file, any audio file, etc. Okay, so speaking of playing different types of media, um, audio files, video to files, and all the different formats that go into that back on your computer, you may have noticed, especially with a fresh Windows install, that when you try to play a file back in a media player, it may say, hey, your computer doesn't support that format, you don't have the right codecs installed, etc. So what you can actually do is go ahead and go to the ccp-project.net um, website, and this will have the combined community codec pack, which, in my opinion, if not the best, one of the best codec packs that can go alongside VLC media player or any other type of media player, in order to allow you to play back pretty much all types of media, videos, and audio files. So you download this, you install it, and then you're good to go. You'll be able to play back weird formats. Um, I don't know if .ogg is standard to Windows being able to play it back as a video file, but um, definitely will be if you have the CCCP pack. So go ahead and pick that up if you don't already have a codec pack installed on your computer. And there are other ones out there which are pretty good, but that's the one I usually use. Um, now for the last menu, um, the help menu, the real, really the only thing you're going to need here, unless of course you do literally need help, is going to be check for updates. A VLC media player um, may let you know when there's a new update available, and if you just want to get the update installed, you don't want to go to their website to have to do it, you would just go help check for updates, and uh, then it'll give you a couple prompts yet. Yeah, next, 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 update, okay, great, restart VLC media player and you're good to go. So, last couple things over here, um, down on the bottom, you can also open the playlist by hitting this uh, little icon here with the three different bars. It's just like opening it up from the tools menu. Um, aside from that, the uh, loop toggle function. You can loop one song, all of the songs, or uh, no loop at all, and you can also do that with video files as well, but you're usually going to do that with audio. And lastly, uh, any good media player is going to allow you to randomly uh, move between tracks on your playlist. So if you need to enable randomness, maybe you have a party mix going on, or maybe you just don't want to listen to the same songs in order every single time, you can toggle randomness right there on the bar right there. So most of your functionality, really down there, but there are a few useful tools, as we've explained in this video, up there. So that's really all you'll ever need to know for 99% of uh, using VLC Media Player, and I hope we've convinced you that it is a really solid tool for uh, playing back your media files inside of Windows, but also I believe they, well, I know for a fact they have a Linux version. Not sure about Mac, but um, check it out anyway, even if you have a Mac. Uh, so I've been Chris. I hope you found this introductory video to Video LAN Client Media Player or VLC Media Player uh, pretty helpful. And if you'd like, uh, leave some feedback down in the comments section down below. I'd love to know if you like this format and you want me to keep making uh, tutorial videos in this format where it just kind of gives you the overlay of the video itself. Aside from that, you can also check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash chris tutorials. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.